Now, I recently got my first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Titanium Yoga. That was with the three to two aspect ratio, the gorgeous titanium finish on the lid, carbon magnesium on the chassis, everything you'd want in a premium two-in-one. I also thought the performance was very good. And again, I love that three to two aspect ratio on that gorgeous QHD Plus display. I just took delivery of this. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 6. Now we've looked at the Gen 9 in terms of the X1 Carbon. This is its sibling. This is running the Core i7 1165G7. This has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, which is a move from the 16 to nine from last year and everything looking good so far. It's got that phenomenal ThinkPad keyboard that we know and love, and it's got this beautiful aluminum finish. We're gonna take a look at it now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 6. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. This review unit was provided by Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1752.80. I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now this is a review unit. You probably will get a nicer box in your retail packaging. Inside the box, you get a 65 watt USB-C power adapter along with the extension cord. You also get some documentation along with some warranty information as well. Holding the unit for the first time, I gotta say, I absolutely love this design and especially with this finish. It's called Storm Gray and it looks really nice with this all aluminum metal build. At an even three pounds or 1.35 kilograms, a little bit heavier than the X1 Carbon Gen 9 that I just took a look at, but it's still very thin and it's still very light, easy to take with you on the go. And to put its size into perspective, here it is with the X1 Titanium Yoga, which has a three to two aspect ratio versus the 16 to 10 aspect ratio of the X1 Yoga Gen 6. And you'll notice the slightly taller nature of that three to two display on the X1 Titanium Yoga. And here it is with the X1 Carbon Gen 9. As you can see, they have almost an identical footprint. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side. We get two USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 ports. The benefits of those, of course, are they do data charge display out. You can drive multiple 4K monitors or one 8K monitor if you want. You get one USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and an HDMI 2.0 port. Moving over to the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone audio combo jack, a second USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally a Kensington lock port. Also on the right side is the silo that houses the pen. Now notably missing, there's no SD card reader and there's no LAN port. If you want to use a LAN port, you'll have to use an adapter. And if you get the optional 5G, you'll also get a nano SIM slot where you'll put your nano SIM, of course. And I love the fact that Lenovo makes it super easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. And as a side note, I would remove the pen before you pop off the bottom plate. And once inside, you'll notice that it has two fans for cooling, along with a 57 watt hour battery. We'll get into that and more in the upcoming full review in terms of the battery life and of course the thermals. Now, once inside, you'll notice that the SSD is user replaceable, although the one they give you gives you some really good reads and writes, as you can see from these results. But unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM, but you can configure this with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty good. Now, as far as the wireless is concerned, it has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. Now, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that down the road, just so you know. Now, you could also get it with the optional 4G LTE or 5G on this, and that is a great convenience factor if you are a business traveler on the go. Unfortunately, there are no leads on this and there are no antennas, so if you want to do it after the fact, you cannot, so you need to configure it at the time of checkout. 
And for those wondering, yes, you could pretty much open the lid with one finger. That's unusual for a convertible, but this has some really sturdy hinges, which allow it. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, this has that legendary ThinkPad keyboard. You're looking at around 1.5 millimeters of key travel. Excellent for typing for extended periods of time. Good tactile feedback. And it doesn't feel like your fingers will bottom out. Really good keyboard once again. And you also get, of course, a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And it also has a spill resistant keyboard even better and it has a precision touchpad that really works well very responsive two finger scrolling is buttery smooth and all the windows 10 gestures work as you'd expect and it has the track point, which is an inherent part of the ThinkPad DNA. Some people will like it. Some people don't care. Uh, I'm ambivalent towards it. I used to use it a lot more than I do now, but it is a nice way to navigate through the OS. It's a nice option to have, and it's still here, not going away anytime soon. Okay, let's talk about the display. What we're looking at here is a 14 inch full HD plus display. It also is an anti-glare display, meaning it's a matte display. You don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections. Now I have the touchscreen model with the privacy guard that has a 500 nit display brightness. And the privacy guard is great if you're a business user that values security and privacy. You don't want somebody peering over your shoulders, getting your company secrets. And that would be a really nice benefit of having that privacy guard. I'm not the biggest fan of the privacy guards i think it looks a little more washed out than your traditional displays but of course you could always get it with the uhd plus display with a resolution of 3840 by 2400 or you can get a full hd plus without that privacy guard again also at 500 nits very bright display so far and i'll bring you all the metrics in the upcoming full review it does cover the color gamut very well it is color accurate and it does have good viewing angles and again if you want to have that privacy you press the function d that will put it into the privacy mode giving you more security and privacy. It's got some really thin bezels, giving it a nice, sleek, and modern look. And of course, it now has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, a move away from the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. This is, of course, going to be better for productivity. You'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing, better for spreadsheets, better for Microsoft Word documents. This is a great move, and I'm happy they did this. They also did it, of course, with the X1 Carbon Gen 9 that I recently took a look at. So this is the front-facing camera on the brand new ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 6 here for 2021. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. Uh, it's also an infrared webcam. That means you could log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Uh, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. How does the video look? How does the audio sound out of the microphones? Is this good for Zoom? Good for working from home? Let me know in the comment section below. And the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Setup was easy and registered my finger each and every time I used it. Another added layer of security. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put it into the different modes. The tent mode is great for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. The same could be said for the stand mode, another great way to consume media or recipes in the kitchen and the like. Now, you could also, of course, put it into the tablet mode. This is great for use with the pen. Now, the pen is included at no additional cost. It stows and charges within the device. It uses the Wacom AES technology, and it is good for taking notes, sketching an artwork, or whatever you might need. It's a nice, convenient factor to be able to store and charge it in the device. There are two bottom facing speakers that use the Dolby Atmos speaker system. I think it's pretty good, gets pretty loud, decent mids, and there is a hint of bass. Not too bad for a business focused laptop. I'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. And so far, performance is looking good out of that 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. I have the Core i7 1165 G7. It has integrated Iris XE graphics. I'll bring you all the numbers in my full review, but my initial benchmarks so far show that it has really decent performance as we've been seeing, especially when it comes to graphics with the integrated Iris XE graphics. You could definitely do some gaming on this. You can definitely do some video editing on it. I'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 24 hours in, I am really liking the ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 6 here for 2021. Like the move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio, like the Thunderbolt 4 port slash USB 4 ports. I like the active pen that's included at no additional cost, those and charges in the device. I like the optional wireless WAN, 5G, 4G LTE option. That is great. It's got that legendary ThinkPad keyboard. It's a spill-proof keyboard that is really excellent for typing on. I'm really happy with that. Very good speakers once again with this a really nice improvement there and it also has good performance out of that 11th gen tiger lake processor 
the negatives here is that the fact that they're still using a 720p webcam not good in 2021 there's also missing an sd card reader it's not wireless wan ready that means you cannot add the wireless modem later on you'd have to get the 5g lte when you check out and the ram is not user upgradable although the ssd is but so far, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really liking the X1 Yoga Gen 6 here for 2021. So what do you think about this bad boy, the X1 Yoga Gen 6? Absolutely loving it. This is a really nice upgrade over Gen 5. Move to the 11th Gen, Tiger Lake processors, integrated XE graphics, the move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Now, for those that want a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, take a look at my video on the X1 Titanium Yoga. Very similar in a lot of regards, very different in other areas, of course. Now, performance again, has been very good so far. I like the battery life. I like everything about it. We're going to talk about it more in the upcoming full review. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.